Okay, today uh, we're going to continue discussing how to implement and live Islam from the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. And today we're going to speak about the ease in doing so by benefiting from the lessons learned after the Prophet's conquest of Mecca. After the Prophet Muhammad con conquered Mecca. Now remember, he was forced to migrate to Medina because he was unable to practice Islam freely in Mecca. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina, this was three years. Three years after he had received the call to uh, 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 Allah to be a prophet. And while the prophet was in Medina, he conveyed the message of truth for 13 years. So he stayed in Medina for 13 years calling the people to Allah. And Allah promised him that he would eventually be able to return back to Mecca. Eventually, Mecca would become an Islamic state, just like Medina was. Also, guys, Allah promised the Prophet that once Mecca was conquered, after that, the people would enter into Islam in great numbers. And this seemed to be an impossible dream to the Prophet. But that dream became a reality after Mecca was conquered. After the Prophet did take back Mecca, it's, that's when Islam began to spread throughout not only Arabia, but through the Roman and the Persian empires as well. People began to run to Islam, flock to Islam. You know, they wanted this new way of life. Okay? But it seemed impossible in the beginning. And so what happened was, after 13 years of calling the people to Islam, that's when Allah finally gave the command to the Prophet to go back and take Mecca now. The time had now come to go back and to claim Mecca. So when the Prophet and his followers left Medina to fight against the Quraysh in Mecca, what happened was, the Prophet made dua asking Allah. He said, oh Allah, these are our families. These are our relatives. And I do not like to see so much bloodshed. He said, please minimize, minimize the casualties as much as possible. Well, Allah answered the Prophet's dua. When the Prophet and his companions left Medina with their army and went to take back Mecca, all the Arabs of Mecca ended up embracing Islam. They all became Muslim. And those who were once enemies to the truth had now become warriors of it. And one of those such men was Abu Sufyan. And you guys have heard my lecture uh, on Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan, who was one of the leaders of the Quraysh, okay? Okay, and he had become Muslim. So did his wife, Hind, the one who was responsible for the death of Hamza and ate his liver. Also his son, you know, Muawiyah, Ikrama, and all of them, everybody became Muslim. The ones who were once enemies were now warriors of Islam, okay? And when the other Arab tribes around Arabia heard the news that the Quraysh had embraced this new religion. Many of them became Muslim too. They said, well, if the Quraysh, who is one of the greatest tribes we have, if they have embraced Muhammad and his religion, then maybe we should do the same. So they did too, except for two other major tribes. There were just two major tribes of Arabs that refused to accept the Prophet Muhammad and they refused to accept Islam. 
In fact, those two tribes, they declared war on the Muslims. And they made plans to attack Mecca when they heard that the Prophet Muhammad was there. Okay? But Alhamdulillah, Allah revealed to the Prophet Muhammad that these two Arab tribes were planning to attack him. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received this news, he gathered together his army, which now included not only the Arabs from Medina, but also the great warriors of the Quraysh. Remember Abu Sufyan, the cause of the Battle of Badr, the Battle of Uhud, Khalid bin Walid. Khalid bin Walid, who was the one that stopped the, the Muslims from having a complete victory at Uhud. He was Muslim now. These were the best warriors. They were now new converts. So when the prophet heard that these two Arab tribes were planning to attack them, the prophet called all his Muslims together. He said, we can't rest long. We now have to intercept these two tribes because they have declared war on us and we want to intercept them. We do not want them to come to Mecca to fight us. We want to catch them outside of Mecca. So he told them all, now here is the call for those of you who are new converts, heed to the call of Allah. And they, they all uh, responded. And this became, this was the largest army that the Muslims had ever had. They had some of the greatest warriors of Arab in Arabia with them. Also, not only did they have the men they needed, but also this is the first time that the Muslims had the armory too. Remember, every battle previously that they fought, they didn't have enough camels or they didn't have enough horses. They didn't have the weaponry. But now, remember, the Quraysh were a rich tribe. They now had camels and weapons and horses and spears and arrows and bows. They had knives. They had armory. They had everything. And as the Muslims rode from out of Mecca, many of them began to boast and brag. They began to boast about how they could not be defeated. They said, subhanAllah, look at our numbers. They numbered over 30,000 guys. They had over 30,000 men. That was a large army. They never had that large an army before. They said, we shall not be defeated this day. Look how large we are. Look at how great we are. We got the weapons we need, the horses we need, the camels we need, and the best warriors. They said, no one can defeat us. No one can stop us. And this is when they earned the anger of Allah. Because remember, what is it that Allah hates more than anything else? That is arrogance and self-conceit. Remember, Allah wants us to keep in mind that whatever good comes to us is from Allah. Only Allah can bring you help. Only Allah can bring you victory. It doesn't matter how large your army is. It doesn't matter how many guns you have. Only Allah can get, make you victorious. But when you start putting yourself up on a level equal to Allah, you have now associated partners with him. So, the Muslims... For the first time, they had the largest armory, the best warriors, but they also were bragging and boasting. So that means Allah had to teach them a lesson. Remember, just because you say you believe in me, does that mean that I will not test you? Many of those men in that army were new converts. They had just embraced Islam. But do you think 
that just because you say you believe in me that I won't test you? So when the Muslims met their enemy on the battlefield, guess what? They were defeated. This was the first battle the Muslims ever lost. Allah gave them a, te- a taste of the bitterness of defeat in spite of their strength, in, vi- in spite of their numbers. And Allah did this in order to lower their heads and to make them humble themselves before him. And this is how it is with many of us Muslims today. Sometimes we get beside ourselves and we begin to take the blessings of Allah for granted. Many of us, we forget from where we came. So Allah will send us defeats as a means of snapping us back to reality, guys, and as a means of humbling us. A lot of people say, again, dear Sister Layla, why does Allah subject the believer through so many trials? Again, as a means of keeping us humble, humble before him. Remember, guys, life is filled with ups and downs. And again, life is one big fitna after another. But we must never allow the bad nor the good of life to cause us to forget Allah and his blessings. Remember, whatever good befalls you is from Allah. Thank him. Glorify him. Praise him. But never take him for granted. And this was the mistake that the companions made. They took Allah for granted. And immediately after experiencing their defeat, Being that they were believers, they knew that it was from their arrogance. And what did they do? They immediately turned to Allah and asked him to forgive them. Because they knew, oh my God, see we were too arrogant. Oh that my God, all that bragging and boasting we did, Allah caused us to lose this battle as a means of humbling us. And this is how it is for the Muslims today too. Right after the defeat comes to us or the bad event happens to you, it is then that you realize, oh, wow, that's because I didn't do this or I did that. For example, that sister here at the website who two years ago, she was refused to wear a hijab. And she used to come to this website every day arguing with me about how she don't have to wear a hijab. So one day she called me on the phone. She said, Sister Layla, let me tell you what happened. I was driving home and I got into a car accident. She said, Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. My car was total, but I walked away without a scratch. She said, but immediately as my car began to slide, The first thing that went through my mind was this is the law's way of paying me back for not wearing my hijab. She said, I knew that this defeat came as a result of me not wearing hijab. She said, so guess what, Layla? You may laugh at me, Sister Layla, but I'm sleeping in my hijab now. I wear it every day out the house and in the house. SubhanAllah. That's a believer for you. And that's what happens right after defeat comes to us and the bad thing happens. We realize, oh my God, it's because of some deficiency within ourselves. And after the believer realizes their folly and repents, Allah then sends his help to you. But it is only after we realize our mistake. And that's what happened with these companions. Right after they were defeated, they immediately knew why and they repented and then Allah brought them victory in their next battle. And listen to what Allah says in the Quran and the interpretation, the meaning. Then did Allah send his calmness on the prophet and the believers. In other words, once the, the, the Muslims realize that their arrogance and their conceit is what brought them defeat, then Allah sent victory to them in the next battle that they fought. The next battle they fought, they defeated 
defeated these Arab tribes. And that's the case with us today. Once we realize our mistakes and we turn back to Allah, he then sends us his reassurance. You see that? So after the Muslims here realized their mistake and repented, Allah gave them victory over one of the Arab tribes that opposed them. And upon their embracing Islam, because what happened was once the Muslims defeated that tribe, that tribe became Muslim too. And to show uh, how the prophet was, he released all that tribe's prisoners of war. And this impressed the Arabs. They said, oh my God, Muhammad must not be a bad man. He released our prisoners. And when the other Arab tribe heard that the prophet had released the prisoners of war from their other tribe, they too became Muslim. Their leader came to Mecca himself and said, I embrace Islam too. So this just goes to show, guys, that as people claiming to be of the truth, we have to realize that our actions are not just watched by Allah, but our actions are closely monitored by the people as well. Whatever you do, tr it's true dawah. True dawah is from your behavior, not your, your words. The way we treat other people, the impact that we have on other people's lives, that is dawa. That's what may cause someone to embrace this way. Everybody understand that? And again, this is how the companions were. When they released those prisoners of war, the other Arab tribe embraced Islam and became Muslim too. So what did that mean? That meant that now the entire peninsula of Arabia was Muslim. All of Saudi Arabia was a place uh, and was an Islamic state. The Jews had been ran out of there because they had broke all their agreements with the Muslims, as we talked about yesterday. All the Arab tribes had embraced Muhammad as a messenger and a prophet, and they embraced this way of life, and now the whole peninsula was an Islamic state. Okay? So thus we learn from this example that life is truly a hardship. And life is truly one test after another. And just as we pass the test in life, we must never take a law for granted, guys. We must never become so vainglorious to think that we are above being tried, that we are above being defeated, that we are above falling down. And we must never forget the blessings of a law, too. And finally, we learn that all eyes will always be centered on us. If you are a true person of faith, not only is Allah watching your actions, but the rest of the world is too. So we have to make sure that the things we do are good. The things that we do in life will impact others in a good way. We have to remain conscious of Allah and always think out our actions before acting upon them. And also we have to think out our words too. Be careful what comes out of your mouth. Be careful the things that you say. <laughs> Ha 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 